Hello. Welcome to the first episode of the vlog. My name is Emma. I'm an independent music artist and a pharmacist. I am based in London and I'm doing a whole lot of different things that I just thought, you know, would be interesting to share. I had a much more formal setup, but it just didn't feel right. Um, it feels weird to talk to camera and to make it too, like, I don't know, too... I'm just gonna go with the flow. The way that I've been filming over um, the past few months, there's no way for me to <laughs> edit uh, events in a way that makes sense. So I'm probably going to have to cut in and out to the present being today um, so that I can explain some things, like I can give some context. Once I get better at filming and I get more consistent, then I will probably not need to cut in and out of present and past tense as much. I'm, at the end of each episode, I'm going to talk about a project that I've done already. I figured for now it makes sense to start at the beginning. So at the end of this episode, we're going to go through the first uh, video shoot I ever did for my song Something Beautiful, which is the first track that I released and probably the first track that I wrote that I actually liked. So it's a song that's basically started my career. And so we're going to look at the photo shoot that I did to shoot the cover. This is going back six years now. So I know, I, I don't know everything now, I'm still learning, but I knew nothing back then. So I learned a lot. So we'll go through the process um, of the day. And then we'll also, I'll also talk about how much things cost me. Obviously they might be a little bit more expensive now, but not by a lot. Anyways, we'll get there. Now let's go into the actual vlog. In this next bit, I've just come back from a wedding that morning, which is why I look rough and tired. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go for a brunch with my good friends who are all pharmacists as well. So we all train together. It was Awat's birthday. Um, recently so we decided to do like a fun staycation in London and to go for brunch and to stay at a hotel etc etc and also we hadn't seen each other properly pretty much since the pandemic started um, obviously everyone's been so busy because of that um, so we decided just to get together and and uh, spend a little time together which is great good morning um... It's quite late, it's like nine o'clock. I have three hours to get ready, shower, pack. So we're gonna drop our stuff first and then go to brunch. I was about to say, I'm in a bunk bed and you're saying rich anti vibes. Okay. Amen. <laughs> straight into bed it's like nine o'clock in the morning i did not sleep i've taken tomorrow off for the next two days gonna look at my ip work look at my accounts look at my music just everything every small admin task i've needed to do is getting done over the next 48 hours so that i'll be in a position where i just have to start writing my first essay i need to get organized it's been a while but yeah, we had a great time, um, but I'm tired and exhausted, so I'm gonna try and sleep. Okay, so fast forward now, this is the next Saturday. Um, I didn't film 
the whole of that week just because there was nothing really eventful that happened. Um, I was meant to write an essay for my uh, independent prescribing course, which I never got around to. So by the Saturday, I have like three days. <laughs> I've got three days to write that because the deadline was that following Monday. Um, but I'm on my way to see my friend um, and we're going to an exercise class. Weather's crap. I'm just walking to the bus stop now. I thought that was my bus. It's not. Um, to meet my friend at the train station for this class. Okay, so at this point we've done most of the class and Paris, our trainer, is telling us that we've got a competition before we leave. And I'm super competitive, so I'm currently conserving energy to blitz the competition. Basically, it was last woman standing. If you stop, then you're out. And as you can see, everyone stopped around me. There were two other girls off camera who also stopped. And she's told us that there's candles at stake. There's lots of free prizes. So at this point, I'm thinking I'm good. But because we didn't suffer enough for her, she told everyone to come back in the game. So I'm going to speed this part up probably by 10 times because there was another lady off camera who was not going to let me take this home. And I am exhausted. My form, I, yeah, my form is terrible now. <laughs> but in the end, I won. It's like nine o'clock at night and I am finally getting to <laughs> start writing this essay. I didn't realise that I'd be getting back from seeing my friend at five and then by the time I really sat down it was like six like got out of the wet clothes warmed up and etc etc and then because it was so rainy I needed to go get my mum from work it's been so bad today so really I had like about half an hour before I left to go and pick her up this day has gone and I have not done this essay I've literally got tonight and tomorrow and then Monday it's due. I have to be like putting in some serious work. But before we do that, this is the stuff I won today um, in the workout challenge. Honestly, when she said free candle, I was like, that's a wrap. I am taking that home. So, and it's not even just any candle, like it's such a nice luxury candle. The packaging is so nice. Her name is Paris. Collection is Paris Fabienne. So this is the packaging of the candle. And they are £22 each usually. She has like gorgeous fragrances. This one is black plum and rhubarb. Ooh. Kind of looks like the one I've got now which is not lit for some reason. Ah, I got this one for my birthday. My cousin bought it for me. There we go. And I love to, I love like multiple wick candles. I just love it, love it, love it, love it. And she was talking to me about how she's designed it in a way that the mac the wax doesn't waste because you know how some candles 
they they will melt down in the middle and the edges will still be solid and I hate that so I'm just excited it's a soy wax oh okay that I think this one is gonna run out by either today or tomorrow so I'll swap it then and then also I won uh, some this like I think it's like aromatherapy it's like a a body oil that is got it's got jojoba vitamin E and rose petal infused safflower oil grapeseed oil coconut rose hip jojoba vitamin E fragrance dried rose petals dried chamomile dried marigolds dried hibiscus dried lavender and fenugreek seeds Apl can apply to damp or dry skin oh that's luxurious oh guys don't mind my nails okay I'm I'm gonna I'll fix it I got resistance bands all this because I just had to do a few extra wasn't a few extra it was like I didn't think the other lady was gonna stop jeez I was like girl Ooh. and a pouch yes pouch five colors and five resistance levels okay now it's time to work I will probably try and oh I just remembered I have to wake up early tomorrow I have to wake up at 6 a.m. I have to be in the petrol queue by 6 a.m. tomorrow. Otherwise, we can't drive to church. We have to take the bus. And you know what I realized today? Like, I've been driving for so long. Today, it was raining. No, it was not raining. T today, it was like a monsoon. And all the time, I was thinking, wow, this is the ghetto. Why am I walking in the rain and getting wet? Like, why... Is there water in my shoes? So I don't know if I can handle taking the bus to church tomorrow. It's far. And I have not done that walk in like three years. That walk is long. Like there's a walk between the station and the church that's like, it's not necessary. So hopefully I get petrol tomorrow. Because honestly, if I don't get petrol tomorrow, I can't use my car anymore until like this actually dies down. Okay, time to work. Time to work. I'm in a petrol queue, it's 6.21 on a good Sunday morning. It's at the point now where I hope I'm gonna have enough fuel to get around this queue. It's not that bad. Do you know, I called the petrol station yesterday and she was like, we open at seven, but I can see them moving and it's 6 a.m. so, I wish she had told me the truth or she, I don't know, maybe she didn't know. She's trying it. Look at this one. Don't even, you need to go to the back. This is the queue into the station. I'm actually getting petrol. I can't believe it, guys. Well, let me not speak too soon. I don't think it's... Um... That is that done. I have petrol in my car. Oh my gosh. I really filled this tank. I filled it so hopefully now I don't have to do that again for a month and by next month hopefully sanity has returned good morning <laughs> So I've managed to get past the annoying long bit of this. I'm now 
we're at the part where I can just kind of free flow and include the references that I've read and it's going much faster. Um, and I checked the deadline and found out that it's not due at 4 o'clock, it's due at 11.55pm. So that gives me almost 8 extra hours. These are the things that keep me being a last minute dot com person and it's such a bad habit because I always find like, not always, but sometimes when it's a bit tight on a deadline and I just check it again. <laughs> I realized that actually I read it wrong the first time or something silly that gives me just a bit of extra time and then I don't learn my lesson like not that I wanted to fail but I feel like if my deadline was actually four o'clock I'd be like oh let's not do this to ourselves again but it's like almost midnight so I'm good um but no no honestly next essay is due in a month and I don't want to be in this position again. There's no reason why I can't, like I couldn't have just devoted a bit more time and then like all of the stuff that I'm doing now I could have done it easily, half an hour here, half an hour there. So next essay, I just make more of an effort. I don't want to be this last minute.com person, I don't submitted for grading 30 minutes left <laughs> i can still make changes no thank you this is the throwback section now um, i'm gonna look at the first photo shoot i ever did i've probably been an artist for a few months if that at this point and i by just the timeline i hadn't released any music because um i was shooting the cover shot for my first single so I was very very new so <laughs> why am I cringing do you know what I find it so difficult to watch myself right let's see okay so where um where we filmed was this place called uh, Beltcraft Studios. It has so much character. It was almost like being in four or five different studios because you could use little corners and it would look like you're in a completely different place. And they were really kind to me as well. I remember emailing them. I was like, I'm right at the beginning of my career. Um, I wanted to know if you have any um, concessions for independent artists. I'd like to do my uh, cover shoot there. I just asked whether they could um, give me a discount for the space and they did I think from my knowledge I have to find the email but I think they charged me 170 pounds or something for the whole day or just or something something it was like a concession for what that like their, their usual rate and what they gave me so that's I think that's the first thing is like you ask if you don't ask then you won't get if there's a space that you really love talk to them there are spaces on my bucket list for where i want to perform and i know that if i was to commercially go to them and say look i'd like to rent this space out their proper day rates probably thousands for an event if it was a commercial company but if you go to them as an artist and you're like i don't have a lot of money but i can give you this much is that acceptable to you they can only say no and if they say no then that's fine when you have enough money go back but a lot of the times it's especially with venues. I find that venues like to have their venues used. And if nobody is booked, has booked them on that day, then there are more than, venues are really accommodating is to like try and help you to, to do something in their space, especially if it's something cool. So yeah, do that. Yeah, so I was working with, um, sorry, what, I keep pausing it but I was working with a photographer called um, Toby Lewis Thomas and my good friend Ava who is now in Germany but I saw her recently and she's doing really well so Ava at the time was kind of my manager so she was the first manager that I had Yeah, I had like four or five people on the team. So these two um, lovely girls are Susanna and Joanna. 
and I don't know what they're doing now but at the time they were kind of into fashion and that's the other thing I didn't have much money and so I would go to people and say I'm doing this project um I can't pay you but I would always say that straight out of the bat like I can't pay you but I can cover your expenses blah 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 and depending on what stage of their careers they're at like some of the, some people are like yeah that's great that sounds great other people are like no I can't do that now um that I'm a much more established artist I have never asked anyone to work for free um mostly because I don't like to be asked to work for free I still can't pay massively massive budgets but I will always pay something um and so yeah the I think morally the days of saying oh can I you know cover your expenses or whatever that that is that's done now there are still people who for example in my last music video there was a guy there who I didn't bring on I think the 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 DOP or some somebody brought a student on to the project but that wasn't me asking the student to work for free that was him just coming along and helping out and even then in the end I ended up paying for his travel and his expenses like covering his expenses or something but it that's it that's it obviously different because um I didn't invite the student he just came just be honest about what your budget is if you're a young artist um and you go to people on your level the students who are building their portfolio or photographers or videographers you can ask them and if they say no they say no the girls obviously picked looks for me I would have had a conversation about what type of clothes I wanted to wear which is funny like looking at the options now I probably wouldn't wear half of this I feel like fashion is something that is always evolving for me I also had a makeup artist on set oh, I've forgotten this girl's name I have to look it up I have to look it up Hi, hi, I'm Abigail Lynch and I am the makeup artist and I've done the face today. Yeah, so I kind of, I hired her a couple of times actually and um, I, I, did, I would have loved to have a makeup artist on every shoot but number one, it was expensive like everything else, everything costs and so even if you're paying people like on the lower end, if you've got five or six or seven roles to fill automatically that's like seven eight hundred pounds before you've hired the venue before you've even made the kind of the big expenses like the photographer or if you need to hire lights because of that i decided that i should probably learn how to do my own makeup and also i watched this behind the scenes video or whatever or inter i don't know what it was but it was of destiny's child and tina knowles was like the girls learned how to do their own makeup and i was like i'm sorry if Destiny's Child were doing their own makeup at the beginning, I don't need a makeup artist. I can learn how to do this myself. Because for me, sometimes I, f I felt like I needed to make everything professional and everything, you know, I needed to hire a makeup artist. I needed to hire somebody to do lights. I needed to hire this and that. And actually, a lot of the stuff you can do for yourself. Yes, you do need professionals to help. Like, there's no way I could take the pictures. I just can't. I can't be in front of the camera and behind. And, you know, I guess these days you can do, like, um what's that where they have the um, the bluetooth clicker and like there are some people who do their own pictures and they're amazing that wasn't my lane i can pick up most things but not everything so my point is you do need a good team but there are ways that you can improvise and so for me makeup was one of those things even though she was great i decided i was going to just learn myself and kind of do my own thing <laughs> work around it, so just it's half past um, 11 now. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, well I'll be... I'll just, um, check, <laughs> check my... Why am I sitting like this? I don't sit like this in makeup chairs anymore. Actually, maybe I do. I remember feeling so self-conscious here. I remember feeling like I didn't want to smile. great it's so funny i think i was listening to i was listening to the to my sisters podcast and one of them said something so interesting they said that everybody has body dysmorphia 
like to some extent and as much as I love myself and I love my body I really resonated with that because looking at me sitting in that chair I look great and yeah it's not I don't think I would wear that dress now even though it was a cute dress I don't think I released any pictures in this outfit but my point is I remember sitting in this chair and being a bit self-conscious maybe because it was my first shoot maybe because I felt a bit overwhelmed in the space and like what are the pictures gonna look like and how what am I supposed to do am I supposed to be serious am I supposed to smile am I supposed to what well, like how do I give the angles like what should I do but I remember feeling self-conscious and thinking I don't want to smile I remember that vividly is a shame this was where the shot came from oh it's a bit dark it's a bit dark but me sitting on this blue seat that's the actual cover shot which I'll, I'll put in the video so we just went from scene to scene trying different things oh so strange looking back at this We just kind of went through the shots I went away with hundreds of pictures kind of what I had said to Toby at the beginning was like is it okay if I take away all the raw files and he didn't care some photographers do some don't but again if you say what you want at the beginning all they can say is no um, or they can charge you for the whatever for the privilege of taking everything and that's it that's it um, let's put this away. Yeah, like half of those, not even half, probably 80% of those pictures never saw the light of day. So I don't know. I have to look back through them because I've still got them. How much did everything cost? So I had the venue to hire. I had a photographer. Um, so let's how many people were on set that day? It was me, obviously. Then... Ava, who was my manager at the time, Toby, who was a photographer, Susanna and Joe, who were the stylists, my makeup artist, and Priscilla, who was my videographer. I covered for food, travel and stuff for everyone, but that was kind of it. So that was my first exercise in really understanding what it is that I wanted to uh, portray as an artist. What do I want to look like? How do I want to be seen? How even to manage a project, make sure everyone's there on time, blah, blah, blah. It was a confidence building exercise for me, you know, to be comfortable and um, to express myself. I used references for artists that I liked at the time, um, not necessarily that I wanted to look like them, but a reference as to like, oh, that's a cool pose or that's a cool background or, you know, even the space, like looking for spaces because I was very adamant that I didn't want, and this isn't like no offense to people who take outside pictures. I take outside pictures as well. But at the time I was seeing the same type of picture. Everyone was like in the forest with a guitar. I didn't feel like that type of look expressed me. And so I wanted an indoor shoot. I remember being specific about that. I wanted an indoor shoot. I would like for it to look as professional as possible. I would like for it to have character wherever we shoot. I would like, you know, to, to, for it to say something about me as an artist. I didn't want to just be another person standing beside a tree. So yeah, that was that cover art came from that shoot and also the lyric video which I edited myself so I edited parts from the shoot and then also used I think it was like um, After Effects to put the lyrics in the Something Beautiful era was it was really great like it was a, such an amazing start to my career it set the pace actually for the type of art that I wanted to release and also the type of visuals that I wanted with my art
I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching this first episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Thank you for getting to the end. Let me know kind of what you want to see from this vlog. If you have a comment, please write it. If you want to speak to me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. I'm not on Twitter so much. Probably shouldn't say that but I find it very tiring. I'll put the links below. I'm not really sure how to exit this video. The music as well, Something Beautiful is on Spotify so all the music that I reference will obviously be music that I have released and you can go and listen to it uh, if you want right now. I'll link the lyric video um, uh, to the end of this so that you can see what I did. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.